，我哋特别会议系第三节而家开始。May I call to order the third session of our special FC meeting? I will run from 4:50 to 6 p.m. First, let me welcome Professor Casey Chen, Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury, and also his team to this session. They are going to answer questions in relation to financial services and public. Service finances. So, uh, please note that we're only dealing uh, with uh, FS financial services. So, please note uh, the um, serial number in your reply. Do you have any speaking note, uh, Secretary? Yes, I've prepared a brief uh, introduction, but to save time for members to ask more questions, I will just highlight the important points, and uh, my speaking notes can be uh, passed on to members after the meeting. Yes, member. Yes, chairman. I'd like to brief you on the uh, draft estimates of the FSTB for 2014-15. I've allocated about one billion dollars from my operating expenditure envelope to the financial services branch and departments under its purview, and this is an increase of uh, 1.2120 million dollars over last year. Uh, first. Uh, Developing offshore RMB business in Hong Kong, enhancing financial cooperation with the mainland to further strengthen Hong Kong's offshore RMB business, will continue our dialogue with the relevant mainland authorities uh, to uh, uh, to enhance uh, RMB business with other places. Uh, through SEPA and other regional platforms, we will further enhance uh, in cooperation and uh, interchange with. Uh, our counterparts on the mainland. Promoting market development, I have a few important uh, priorities to mention. First, fund and asset management business. We are now actively developing Hong Kong into a full fledged fund service center. We've just launched a public consultation on a proposal to introduce an open ended fund company structure to cater for the establishment of fund vehicles in corporate form. I am going to uh, brief the panel on financial affairs of this council on the proposal on the 7th of April. And we're also preparing legislation to extend the tax re exemption for offshore funds to private equity funds. We've set up a task force to review the uh, requirements under the Inner Revenue Ordinance for interest deductions in the taxation of corporate treasury activities. It is expected that concrete proposals will be submitted to the financial secretary within the year. Bond market. Uh, we plan to launch a further issuance of uh, I bond worth not more than $10 billion with a maturity of three years. And just uh, last week, the Council enacted the Loans Amendment Ordinance 2014, and we will com consider using uh, Sukuk under the government bond program in the light of prevailing market conditions and needs. Regarding captive insurers, the bill for providing tax concessions for them was passed on the 19th of March. We will step up our promotion efforts to attract more enterprises to form captive insurers in Hong Kong. And the new company's ordinance came into operation on the 3rd of March and will closely monitor its implementation and continue with our publicity campaign to enhance public awareness of the new ordinance. On improving corporate insolvency law, we have commenced the corporate insolvency law improvement exercise to facilitate more efficient administration of the winding up process and enhance protection for creditors. We are also going uh, to waive stamp duty for the trading of all exchange traded funds ETF. In view of the rapid development uh, in the market, we face keen competition in the region, and uh, we tend to waive the stamp duty for the trading of all ETFs to lower the contraction transaction costs of all ETFs tracking indices that comprise Hong Kong stocks. And uh, we plan to introduce legislative amendments to the council at the next legislative session. On investor protection, uh, we're going to enhance uh, protection for investors in terms of um, uh, enhancing the mandatory provident fund system together with the MPFA 
We are actively pursuing different measures with a view to achieving a substantial reduction in MPFEs and enhancing the system. Our focus this year, we include uh, consulting the public this year the proposal of including in each MPF scheme a core fund as the default fund. In the second quarter of the year, we'll introduce a bill for establishing an independent insurance authority with a view to passing it within 2015. Regarding uh, the introduction of uh, uncertificated securities market, we plan to introduce a bill to the Council in the second quarter of this year to uh, establish a broad regulatory framework for enabling the introduction of the regime. We will also try uh, to introduce uh, the uh, uh, the um, a clear ring and settlement systems amendment bill uh, to regulate stored value facilities and retail payment systems. We will brief members on this proposal um, at a meeting of the panel on financial affairs in April. Um, on manpower training, we will communicate with the uh, trade and our intention is to complete the study and uh, submit a proposal to SFC within uh, the year. And we've also earmarked $20 million in 2015 target for talent training for intermediaries in the security sector, particularly the small and medium-sized firms. Uh, on international regulatory framework, we have uh, three priorities in the coming year. First, Regulation of regulation of banks were introduced to the council the relevance of CU legislation on the liquidity and capital buffer requirements under Basel three this year. And to address the risks posed by the failure of systematically important financial institutions and to ensure the continuity of systematically important financial services and clearing and settlement systems, the government, in conjunction with the financial regulators, launched on the 7th of January uh, the first stage of a three-month public consultation. We plan to conduct the second stage of the public consultation uh, with more details later this year. In view of the international trend that the oversight of the regulation of auditors is to be independent of the profession itself, we are discussing with the Financial Reporting Council and the Hong Kong Institute of Certified Public Accountants to explore how to enhance the independence of Hong Kong's regulatory regime for auditors of listed entities. All in all, we will continue to keep a close eye on market developments and the trend of market regulation at the international level. We will work closely with the regulators and the industry to implement the above-mentioned uh, working plans. Chairman, my colleagues are happy to answer questions from members. Thank you. Thank you. Secretary, well, as I've just reminded members, uh, there are two uh, sessions in relation to uh, FSTB. For this session, we'll focus on financial services. So we'll only deal with questions uh, bracketed FS. So please uh, take note when you quote uh, question numbers or reply numbers. I open the floor to members. First round, four minutes for Questions and answers. Mr. Sinchonka. Uh, Chairman of a question on MPF. It is mentioned in the draft estimates that a core fund uh, might be set up. Uh, the Secretary also mentioned uh, this idea in his opening remarks. Secretary, can you tell us uh, which institution is going to operate the fund? Will it be the Hong Kong MA or will it be managed? by different enterprises. Uh, you said that uh, there might be fee control for MPF schemes. Last year, Ms. Anna Wu disclosed a little bit uh, the introduction of a fee control for MPF schemes. 
let you know whether the administration has given up on that idea, and that is uh, there will only be fee control for core fund and for other funds. Uh, there won't be any uh, fee control at all. Secretary, regarding uh, the core fund. We have uh, reviewed the operation of MPF, and we've also discussed uh, with the MPFA. I think uh, uh, we should provide more clarity, transparency uh, for uh, scheme members to choose from, and there should be appropriate schemes uh, for them to choose from. Uh, the so-called default fund we have now uh, fails to achieve this purpose. When we have a core fund, uh, the beauty is uh, many uh, portfolios or investment plans will be standardized. This will not just enhance the transparency. This will uh, enhance competition, and it will make it easier for us to introduce fee control. Because if uh, funds are de de devised differently, it is hard to introduce fee control. Now, when we have a standardized core fund and uh, with more competition and with fee control, fee control, I think uh, that would be a major improvement to the system. Uh, regarding uh, cost control of MPF schemes. I've said many, many times uh, if um, with introduction of competition and a change in policy, if uh, there is uh, no change to cost, uh, we will consider implementing cost fee control. But this is not easy because uh, funds are different or schemes are different. So, as a first step, we will uh, introduce competition and fee control to a core fund, and we will uh, consider the step forward in the light of uh, the outcome. Having said so, even if we are going to introduce fee control uh, in a standardized core fund, it's going to be controversial, and therefore, we will launch a public consultation on this. So if you considered whether uh, the government or the uh, Hong Kong MA or any other organization will manage the core fund, of course, uh, this is open to discussion. But we're thinking that for all MPF scheme, there should be a default fund. We want uh, all schemes uh, to provide a default fund for scheme members. Mr. Wong Kwok Hing, thank you. In relation to uh, the uh, speech by the secretary, I'd like to ask about uh, removing uh, the offsetting arrangement in the MPF system. I know uh, there are different views for employers and employees, but for civil servant provident uh, MPF fund, for NCSC staff, well, the employer is the government. Can the government take the lead and be a good employer? For all NCS staff, we have over 12,000 of them. Will the secretary consider uh, abolishing the uh, offsetting arrangements uh, for NCSC staff first? Because uh, in uh, paternity leave, the government took the lead in the last term of government. And uh, the government has been a good example for uh, uh, for the private sector uh, since maternity leave was first introduced in the civil service. It was an excellent example to other employers. So can the government be uh, the model of a good employer and offset and abolish the offsetting arrangements? Uh, I remember the secretary for the civil service has once answered this same the same question. Uh, and that is uh, in the context of civil service policy and in the context of uh, offsetting under the uh, MPF. I think the uh, same question has been answered. 
Let, let me uh, interject. This afternoon, I asked the same question of the uh, secretary for the civil service. He, he couldn't answer the question. He said uh, this will be uh, left to you, Mr. Secretary, and the uh, Labor and Welfare Bureau. So may I, I just want to interrupt by saying that uh, you shouldn't uh, mention the uh, SES. Well, I just want to say that SES has spoken on this, and I'm trying to say that this is not an isolated uh, area. As Mr. Wong Ko Hing has said, in, and also in past discussions in our community uh, with regard to whether we should cancel the offsetting arrangement and how if we are to uh, uh, cancel it. Uh, the controversy is rather uh, uh, marked. So we need to chart carefully the way forward and how to m make uh, take steps forward. We should not rush into anything. I believe uh, we should have a follow-up discussion and uh, with uh, a consensus reach, uh, we, we can move uh, and carry out more effective uh, measures. I'm disappointed with the answer. I think the administration is shirking its responsibility. I've quoted the example of launching the paternity leave, and the government uh, did take the leave, did take the, the lead and be a good model. So I hope the government would uh, take the lead as a good employer. So therefore, non-civil service contract staff, this can be implemented first, because it's not controversial in this regard. And uh, me electrical members also hire uh, assistants. They should also be covered. I don't think that it's controversial. I don't think any one of the 70 electrical members here would object. You can do it right away. There's no need to go for legislation. Would the secretary reconsider this? Are you going to reconsider this, secretary? Well, I think uh, it's being considered. Mr. Tan Are you going to consider it, secretary? I've, in respect of the question raised by Mr. Wong Kok-heng, yes. Well, I, I've said that it's not an isolated uh, area. It's complicated. And the employment ordinance and the MPF uh, ordinance uh, are already there. I think the best way to take things forward is to, en is to enable a community-wide discussion. All right, last year and this year, in the uh, po in the budgets, you talk about these uh, so-called semi-portable, uh, and this year you're going to consult people on uh, having a core fund. So will the MSTB consult people over the uh, offsetting uh, arrangement? If you are not going to consult people, how can you listen to people's views? As I've said, uh, as I've said in the uh, opening uh, remarks, in respect of the work of the FSTB, I've already said that we are tr we are going to uh, make sh enhance the operation of the MPF system to reduce cost and also to make available the uh, investment or more investment schemes uh, for people to choose at lower cost. We are not saying that some are more important than others. But uh, the handling of uh, MPF issues have been uh, ongoing for years, for some years. We are, there's a consensus that we should enhance the efficiency of the system. So we would like to uh, implement measures that have uh, a greater degree of consensus. As for the uh, offsetting arrangements, uh, wheels are divided without a clear consensus emerging from the uh, community. I don't think that this is uh, something we can uh, complete, uh, we can uh, carry out within this year. As Mr. Wong Kong said, uh, you, you just waited for the bell to ring. And you are now. You are just wait. You are just waiting for the current government uh, ex to have its term expired. 
there must be a framework for discussion, for rational discussion, so that the difference can be reduced. So if you're not going to do this, uh, when are you going to do when, when are you going to revise the two ordinances? If not this year, what about next year or the, or, or the year after next? And I'm just talking about consultation. Well, I'm here to explain the, uh, the work plan for the coming year, for this year. I've explained what we are going to do. Uh, what we are going to do would make we enhance this MPF system and uh, the efficiency and the cost. I believe uh, this is something welcomed by the public. If you are trying to evade this question, in the eye of the uh, employees, well, the uh, portability issue is just a marginal issue. If you are not going to do anything about this, well, I think there will be a greater consensus on uh, the uh, introduction of a territory-wide uh, retirement fund scheme. And then uh, your boss idea of a future fund will be more difficult to implement. Last year, uh, in quest reply 046, uh, employees contributed uh, 53.6 billion dollars, and uh, the cost is uh, is it is the cost eight billion dollars? Well, I think time's up. In uh, paragraph 25 of your speech, you talk about the review of the uh, regulation of uh, auditors. Understand that the, uh, the Financial Reporting Council and the Hong Kong ICPA have discussed uh, relevant issues in how auditors should be regulated. Your bureau stance is very different from that of the uh, FRC, uh, but you are saying that we plan to conduct a public consultation on reform proposals in the middle of the year. Why the rush? Why do you want to do this in the middle of the year? If the coming months you cannot reach a consensus with IC, Hong Kong ICPA, then how are you going to draft the consultation uh, Paper? Are you going to impose that something on our people, on our people, or would there be different uh, options for the public to choose? This is the sec first question. The second question is about FSTB zero one five, and that is in relation to FRC Financial Reporting Council. It said that in twenty fourteen fifteen. $6.5 million will be uh, devoted to help the, the FRC in carrying out its work. And uh, that will also include the sustainable development and also the participating in uh, road shows uh, organized by uh, Hong Kong TTC. If the Financial Services Development Council is an is a organization under the FSTB, why do you have to join the uh, road shows? So is the six point five million dollars uh, devoted to uh, road shows? Is uh, previously it was said that the FSDC is responsible for preparing reports, and they have devoted a lot of resources on this. So, what way are you going to spend uh, the six point five million dollars on? We have uh, on the question of regulation of uh, auditors. Uh, together with the FRC and Hong Kong ICPA, we have uh, devised uh, the direction to take uh, in consultation. Of course, uh, when we co do the consultation, we would uh, provide different options to the industry. And in, the, in terms of the broad direction of the reform, we have uh, reached some consensus with the FRC and the Hong Kong ICPA. Of course, uh, there, are, there are still some uh, uh, questions about uh, the details that we need to talk about further. The, fir the, the point is to uh, set up an independent system which is in line with our circumstances and in line with international uh, standards. Are you going to provide different directions in the consultation document? Are you saying that this is the direction we propose uh, to take, and uh, people are invited to make offer comments? Well, this is a very specialized um, area. You must find a way to, uh, to communicate with the public so that they can understand what you're talking about. 
please uh, con uh, reply, provide reply to my question. Well, your comments will be considered. As for the question of a uh, road show, actually the uh, council is uh, responsible for promotion. In the past year, it did participate uh, in uh, international uh, conferences and seminars. There are many trade representatives in the FSDC, FSDC, and they will be instrumental in promoting Hong Kong's image in the financial sector. We have provided this budget for the work that that is going to do in the coming year. Mr. Wong Ting Huang, thank you. Earlier on, we amended our law on the promotion of Sudo. It seems there's a lot of uh, barking, but very little to action. So, what in respect of suku, I don't think we have seen uh, a lot of uh, active promotion. Can the administration tell us the uh, current state of affair in respect of the uh, development of suku in Hong Kong, and what are the difficulties involved? In this year's budget, are we going to devote any resources in the promotion of uh, suku? And also, earlier on, Hong Kong MA said it would uh, cooperate with the Malaysian, uh, its Malaysian counterparts in setting up a uh, small uh, group on suku. Has this been set up? And what's the progress so far on the development of uh, Islamic uh, born? We compare with uh, other markets such as the Malaysia. We are uh, not as well equipped because we are not an Islamic uh, community. We 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 knew this all along. But why do we want to de develop the Islamic uh, finance? Because the suku is now no longer confined to the Islamic world. This is uh, well recognized internationally by investors. So we have to prepare Hong Kong for the issue of uh, Islamic uh, financial products to meet the demands. Although we don't have a lot of uh, favorable uh, conditions because it's not uh, a traditional market and we don't have the relevant uh, laws, so the the first thing we have to do is to set up the uh, legal framework, the tax tax framework, and then we promote the system with the. Uh, Amendment to the uh, loans uh, ordinance. Uh, so we hope that this would uh, pr promote the development of suku products. Uh, the government has taken the lead, and by doing so, we can help the uh, industry solve some of the problems in relation to the issuance of uh, suku. We hope by doing this, we can also arouse some more interest in suku. As for the uh, collaboration between Hong Kong MA and um, the Malaysian uh, authority, maybe uh, my, my colleague from uh, Mr. Choi from Hong Kong MA can say something about this. Uh, thank you. With regard to the the uh, suku cooperation uh, committee between Hong Kong MA and the Malaysian Central Bank. It's been set up. We had the first meeting last year. Apart from representatives from the uh, two central banks, uh, it, it also involved uh, working personnel from both sides. And uh, they will work together to explore uh, new opportunities. The Malaysian has a mature uh, Islamic financial uh, market. And we would like to make use of leverage on the, their experience in helping our development. Mr. Bachan, I'd like to uh, ask about development of offshore renminbi business and enhancing financial cooperation with the mainland. 
Secretary, I think you know that uh, yesterday 0 0.7 million uh, people uh, congregated in Taiwan to um, express their concern and resistance to uh, ECFA. Uh, whether it was um, uh, uh, by force or by, uh, by hook or by crook, Hong Kong uh, has now got uh, CEPA uh, with the mainland, of course, uh, many uh, organizations in the financial services in particular, or those uh, who uh, have connection have uh, made a, a windfall out of the agreement. Now, I'm not uh, uh, point, I'm not talking about you, Chairman, although you are in from the banking uh, sector, and I think your bank has also profiteered uh, from uh, the agreement, and you've also got uh, privileges and also connections. If need be, you can declare interest later. Uh, starting from the signing of SEPA, I've met, read many reports. There's no detailed analysis of social or on the social economic aspect. Well, uh, the people in Taiwan suddenly awakened, and within two weeks, uh, hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets, and that was unprecedented in history. Now, for many people in Hong Kong, they only know a little bit about agreements with the mainland. Uh, perhaps uh, for short-term interest, we have overlooked the possible impact on Hong Kong in the long term. It may drive us into extinction. Hong Kong might become uh, main, uh, strongly influenced by the mainland, and our um, local uh, economic model uh, will be gradually uh, eroded or even uh, phased out by the mainland. All right, my question is about developing offshore RMB business and enhancing financial cooperation with the mainland. There must be a very detailed social, economic, and political assessment before we go further. Please do not just uh, chant empty jargons, uh, uh, just uh, chant empty slogans, and lure Hong Kong people into accepting this because uh, this can uh, lead to the um, demise of our local economy. Well, even before a SIPA, uh, there was very um, frequent business activities between Hong Kong and China. Many people uh, grasp the opportunity of economic development on the mainland and uh, did a lot of um, things uh, that have also uh, contributed to the prosperity of Hong Kong. In the past three decades, uh, Hong Kong uh, has um, certainly um, got uh, financial uh, cooperation with China. And SIPA is just a free trade agreement, and this is a world trend. All over the world, people are trying to conclude free trade deals. I asked whether there would be a detailed social, economic, and political assessment report. This is my time, Chairman. Although I know your position and where your interest lies, I'm asking whether there will be detailed assessment report. Since the Secretary is so confident, please present a report to the people of Hong Kong, and please do not pull wools over the eyes of Hong Kong people. Can a report be submitted uh, for a financial development and also a RMB business? Well, do you have any report? Uh, it will only be true if you are bold enough to give us a report. If you don't present a report, it means that you're not willing to show the truth to the people of Hong Kong in black and white. Well, you have taken up uh, more than uh, 20 seconds of my time. Well, you can wait for the second round. Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee. Yes, I'd like to talk about uh, enhancing the MPF system. I think people criticize uh, the system because fees are too high and return is low. And the Secretary said that uh, the public consultation uh, to be launched will focus on a core fund. I'd like to know how the core fund uh, will address people's concerns. Will uh, the uh, return be more steady and for reducing fees? I'd like to know what the administration has in mind because uh, this is quite a critical issue. And the second question is about uh, the uh, coming public consultation on auditor regulatory reform. 
According to the Secretary, they have discussed with the Financial Reporting Council at the Hong Kong Institute of Certified Public Accountants. These are two important stakeholders. But many uh, accountant organizations have expressed to me their concerns. And apart from uh, auditors, well, there are auditors of listed companies and small and medium sized audit firms uh, who are worried that uh, there may be a threshold and small and medium-sized auditors may not be able to serve listed companies in the future. So I think uh, just discussing with the FLC and the Hong Kong ICPA is not good enough. Will you also uh, engage the other stakeholders in the dialogue? Secretary, regarding uh, the core fund, after discussing with the MPFA, which has also um, discussed with any experts, including OECD, on uh, how a more appropriate investment arrangement can be prepared for scheme members, they have uh, looked into the issue in depth and they uh, hope to uh, offer appropriate investment schemes for the public to choose from. I think as far as the system is concerned, I think members do not know what are good investments they might have uh, overlooked. Uh, the fact that they should uh, consider the long-term gain rather than the uh, short-term gain. So uh, through a core fund, we hope to uh, educate scheme members. As regards cost to control or fee control, we are still uh, studying this issue. Uh, we hope to uh, receive the views of the public in a coming consultation. As for editors, of course, uh, we have discussed uh, with the Hong Kong ICPA and the FLC. We believe we need to engage more stakeholders, uh, including uh, small and medium-sized audit firms, listed companies, lawyers, and uh, representatives from the banking industry. Uh, they should all contribute to how we can enhance the regulation of auditors. So the public consultation document to be published will um, have an uh, extensive consultation uh, for stakeholders. I'd like to know when the consultation document regarding uh, the MPF system will be published. And also um, the uh, auditor regulatory reform. Yes, of course, uh, in the course of public consultation, you should discuss with stakeholders. But before you do that, can you uh, let us know uh, some of the details? Because auditors are worried that in the future they may not be able to do their job. Please wait for the second round. Mr. Christopher Zhang. Thank you. Um, reply 2831. Uh, it is said that um, uh, the government would make good use of uh, the uh, business opportunities uh, brought about by this uh, going out policy of the mainland. But how about uh, going into the mainland market in January, uh, Chairman of FSC uh, said in an FA panel that they are going uh, to help SMEs and uh, to uh, do a bit to do a report as soon as possible. I'd like to know when the report will be available. And the um, CE uh, in his uh, campaign. Uh, promise to set up the financial uh, services uh, development council. We have spent two point uh, five, six point five million dollars to support the operation of the FSDC. However, one of its uh, main uh, focus full time work is to uh, how to help uh, many enterprises to go out. Why do we use public money to sponsor them? Why is it that uh, they have overlooked 
the very legitimate aspirations of small and medium-sized securities uh, companies in Hong Kong. Uh, Secretary, as far as I'm concerned, I believe FSDC uh, will give policy advice to the government to create a business-friendly environment and also uh, an environment uh, conducive to the development of financial services and to remove the unnecessary constraints and uh, to look out for uh, opportunities for Hong Kong. So I think the FSDC will uh, monitor the uh, will look at the market development at a macro perspective. Looking at their few reports, I think they are moving towards this direction. They are not here to uh, formulate a special policy for a particular trade. Yes, uh, I understand that for every policy, there are bound to be uh, more support uh, from this sector and a fewer support from another sector. I think uh, uh, I can pass on uh, this message to FSDC so that it can consider it in uh, mapping out its uh, way forward. Yes, I hope that there can be a clear report uh, uh, to us on uh, how to help the development of small and medium-sized security firms in Hong Kong. Uh, yes, thank you. Ms. Emily Lau. I believe the Secretary has a noted reports that uh, people from the financial service, financial services have a concern about cooperation of the mainland because they are of the view that there are more uh, manipulation uh, by the mainland in this sector and there are uh, accusations that people are coming to Hong Kong to loan the money and then uh, many people in the financial serv services sector have bowed to such uh, money and uh, this is very serious. I'd like to ask the Secretary whether he is aware of um, such a problem within the industry and what money is in the draft estimates. I'm sure uh, the Secretary would say that we have law against money laundering. But I'd like to ask whether he is aware of these problems and do we have to do something proactively to address the concerns of the industry. Thank you. Hong Kong uh, treats everyone the same. We have a sound regulatory framework, and our open market is open to uh, all part or players. And the question is uh, whether our uh, regulatory framework has caught up with uh, new developments. Yes, we have seen cross boundary problems. Now, I am not uh, a talk. Singling out a particular market, I'm talking about the issues we face. Whether we talk about money laundering, or cooperation, or monitoring, well, we have to uh, do it across the border. We have uh, to cooperate with other jurisdictions. All uh, regulators over the world have uh, spent a lot of time to discuss this. Hong Kong is not just a participant. We keep improving our legislation to ensure that we can meet the most stringent standard in the world. Uh, for instance, uh, we have um, uh, measures uh, to combat uh, money laundering and our taxation legit provisions are also among the um, most advanced in the world and we are enhancing our regulation. Secretary, my question is whether uh, the Secretary has heard these concerns from the uh, sector, uh, whether there are more money from the mainland trying to manipulate our local industry. I know that uh, this is a common concern over the world, but the financial services uh, sector are concerned about money from the mainland. You say that you may legislate or have other measures, but uh, what would, are you going to do that to address the concerns of the sector? When it comes to combating money laundering and other regulatory uh, Legislation. Our uh, regulators are getting, uh, devoting more and more resources uh, on all these uh, matters. And many a time, this is 
these matters are trans uh, national in nature. Okay, please say it again. Well, there are factors which uh, transcend national boundaries and not uh, related to any particular place. I'm talking about the uh, control uh, over Hong Kong by the mainland in financial services. Do you understand the question? If you don't, you can ask people in the uh, industry. My f question is a focus one. I'm just saying that uh, in terms of regulation, try, uh, cross or boundary activities are subject to regulation as well. Mr. Charles Moore. I want to talk about reply 024. Actually, it's a question raised by uh, Ms. Starry Lee. It's uh, said that uh, you want to uh, promote innovation to develop the market, but the answer is a simple one. And that is the uh, it's our ongoing task to formulate policy and measures to facilitate the development of our financial markets. And uh, there will be a uh, funding for that. I want to get an answer on um, innovation. I think the question is a good is a good one. What new areas do we want to go, uh, go into? And in the uh, table, you can see clearly that for some industries, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, IPOs. Uh, for example, IT, we lacking, we lack behind others. You know, the, the there's a recent case involving Alibaba. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Christopher Chung has made a good suggestion. Let's have uh, some development for the gem market. So perhaps uh, we need to uh, go for innovation and uh, decide how to consult in specific areas. Of course, it's good if uh, the existing manpower can handle all these, but uh, I just want to get learn from the secretary whether there there are new plans on the question of uh, uh, sustainable growth, and not just in this government. And uh, I have been personally involved uh, in all these, all of these. We have policies on uh, regulation and uh, development, and then different regulators can implement uh, the diff the policies. There. We have conducted uh, internal studies as well as study jointly uh, conducted with the industry in our uh, stock market. We have uh, innovation in terms of Roman B products and uh, IPOs, and uh, there have been consultations. Uh, the spirit that we uh, espouse is to allow the regulators, the government, and the industry to do something about innovation. I think the stakeholders have all reflected that uh, there are such needs. Can the government take the lead and uh, disseminate the information, the message to the uh, regulators? Would the regulators step, step up their efforts? Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, the regulators are doing this. And the bureau uh, has also uh, created the platform and uh, clarified the uh, policies. And not all of the uh, proposals from the stakeholders can be implemented uh, right away because of uh, the uh, the different stages of maturity of uh, different proposals. Uh, recently, the government wants to develop high tech, advanced technology. It's important that we uh, provide the necessary support through financial services and not just through IPOs, but also for uh, in relation to the encouragement of venture capital investment. So, financial, so we need to step up our work in providing the necessary financial uh, policies. Well, we are considering extending the this the room for development of uh, private equity funds in Hong Kong. I, I think this is uh, good in uh, promoting the growth of the uh, market, and certainly we are happy, very happy to consider proposals from the industry, from the market. Mr. Jeffrey Lam, in your speech, you said 
uh, we would like to, to uh, develop the op Hong Kong's offshore RMB business and uh, enhance uh, financial cooperation with the mainland. So to further strengthen Hong Kong's rem offshore RMB business, you continue your dialogue with uh, relevant authorities to deepen the circulation of uh, RMB funds between the two places, etc., etc. We don't have a large pool of RMB in Hong Kong. And if Hong Kong people want to convert uh, local money into renminbi, it, uh, they are subject to a cap of 20,000 yuan per day. Actually, in the CPPCC, I reflected Hong Kong's people's uh, wish to uh, raise the limit to 50,000. And then uh, there should be a review two or three years later uh, to see whether uh, changes can be made, or perhaps uh, the limit can be further raised to a hundred thousand dollars a day. This would certainly be a great of a great help to deepening the uh, collaboration between Hong Kong and the mainland in renminbi business. You talk about the dialogue; the dialogue will continue, but that may not be very helpful. If uh, in Hong Kong, if we deposit uh, money into a renminbi account, and we cannot withdraw renminbi from uh, a, a bank in, on the mainland, when can uh, the account uh, be uh, accessible uh, in both places? Let's talk about the cap of twenty thousand yuan. I agree that uh, to Hong Kong people. It would be more convenient if the cap is raised, and uh, we have repeatedly uh, proposed this to uh, the People's Bank of China and the uh, CPG and Mr. Zhou, the uh, head of uh, PBOC, has promised to consider this. Uh, they would uh, continue with the dialogue with us and inform us of uh, the progress, notwithstanding the uh, limitations. Uh, the development of renminbi business in Hong Kong is uh, going well. It has to do with uh, corporate uh, demands and uh, the uh, settlement business, creating more renminbi. Uh, Resources in Hong Kong, and of course, uh, if uh, the cap can be raised, uh, we are more than happy to do something to complement, to start to complement uh, the efforts. As for the uh, circulation of uh, RMB funds between the two places, which has to do with the opening up of the capital account and the uh, and uh, policy on uh, bank regulation, uh, and we can only see this realized with uh, major changes to the relevant policies. Uh, in Shanghai, they are going to cre create a financial center. Things have been uh, progressing very rapidly, and the uh, uh, Shanghai Free Trade Zone uh, doesn't have a lot to show. But once uh, they uh, their policies uh, uh, take shape, uh, the progress can be very fast. And. I would like to get some agreement established between Hong Kong and uh, the mainland uh, pending a formal uh, arrangement. Uh, Dr. Priscilla Leung, with the signing of SEPA, we know that India, Singapore, and Taiwan would like to get s a similar agreement signed with the mainland. And uh, when ECFA was uh, discussed and finalized, uh, with Taiwan, Hong Kong was nervous uh, that uh, our competitive edge uh, will be undermined, and now because of internal uh, conflicts and maybe because of uh, political considerations, ECFA will, uh, will not will be affected. I know India and Singapore are very uh, positive about uh, a SEPA-like uh, agreement. I don't think that our uh, 
industries and professionals are making the best use of um, SEPA. And now it seems that ECFA will not be um, implemented very soon. Can we make use of the uh, w uh, window of opportunity to further develop SEPA? Well, when it comes to SEPA, we have been trying to the, make achievements uh, through different stages. And a lot would depend on the uh, opening up of the uh, of the mainland's uh, free trade uh, policy and market. Apart from SEPA, we we'll also monitor other opening up measures and help uh, our business sector to the go the extra mile uh, and to be involved in the development of the, the market on the mainland. We we'll actively follow follow up your suggestion. Well, we, at first uh, we said we should uh, expedite uh, our development since Taiwan has got ECFA, but uh, the mainland will be opening up and they won't uh, pause and wait for Hong Kong. So are you going to assess uh, the uh, achievement of uh, Shanghai Free Trade Zone? And I believe uh, Taiwan will ultimately Embrace effort, so we not should, should not be t uh, too complacent. How can we avoid uh, internal uh, dispute from the getting into the way? I think this is a very good comment. So, uh, apart from signing SEPA agreements, we have to uh, carry out the necessary uh, measures and deepen the, the uh, opening up under SEPA. Mr. Ch Chen Kimpo, oh, he's not with us. So, for the first round, we have uh, Mr. Chen Kim Lam. Ms. Priscilla Leung has uh, raised a question about the implementation of SEPA. I believe the government can do more. We signed the SEPA in 2003, some 11 years uh, have passed. In the past, almost on a yearly basis, we have been signing supplementary agreements to expand the scope of SEPA. I think a lot of promotion has been done for our financial services sector, shipping center. Uh, logistics sector and so on and so forth. The economic benefits brought by SEPA are not very clear, and I agree with Mr. Albert Chen that uh, many people do not understand SEPA. In the past ten odd years, people have been enjoying the benefits uh, brought by SEPA without knowing it. I think you should conduct a an assessment, and then, after signing supplementary agreements, uh, maybe uh, you should uh, conduct a review over the past ten years. For example, uh, in two thousand and three, our economy was in the doldrums, and because of uh, the signing of SEPA, because of the uh, Individual visas schemes. Uh, our tourism, our economy was given uh, an impetus, and also the under SEPA, uh, Hong Kong uh, manufacturers can uh, market their products on the mainland and pay no duty, and uh, all these have uh, brought uh, benefits to Hong Kong. The government should do more to let people understand and know that SEPA has greatly benefited Hong Kong. Although to some people, this means that we are relying on the demand and the mainland economy to a greater extent. But well, this is certainly the case. 
in the past uh, we mainly relied on uh, the growth engine in the US and Europe but uh, after the uh, hand reunification uh, their economies have weakened and now in 2008 uh, they even have a financial term turmoil and crisis and even after so many years uh, their economy is still in a very shaky state uh, the Europe is facing even greater problems than before and uh, if we can set all these out to uh, the community of Hong Kong they would understand that if not for, for the firm support of the country our concern would be there will be no further economic development. I know this uh, question is easy to answer. If the administration is willing uh, to uh, do more publicity, then I don't think uh, there is any pressure here. We all understand if we do nothing, then we will uh, go back to the economic situation 10, 11 years ago. And I think uh, Hong Kong people will know better that uh, SIPA has uh, helped us instead of uh, harm us. Uh, Mr. Chen Kim Po, my question 007. My question relates to the core fund. Beg your pardon. And uh, according uh, to the reply, uh, the uh, core fund uh, is proposed uh, to uh, engage in diversified investment that balances investment risk and return. Yes, I'll let you know uh, if you are to introduce uh, introduce fee control, what will be regarded as the reasonable uh, fees and what will be the cap. Uh, Will the core fund be managed by the government or by the industry? I want the administration to answer this, these questions. And reply 008. Uh, in fact, uh, just like the administration, uh, the sector will like to have automation and streaming of MPF scheme administrative processes to a lower uh, cost. Uh, if that fails, uh, it's only after this has failed that we consider other options. All right, if uh, these proposals are effective, will the administration insisted, insist on introducing fee control measures in addition to uh, the uh, core fund? Uh, regarding uh, the uh, the fee control of uh, the core fund, well, we have to study this issue. We hope to uh, uh, to uh, do, to study further and then consult the public before we decide on the way forward. And will the core fund uh, be managed by the administration or a statutory body or uh, um, uh, uh, the industry? We uh, hope that uh, the core fund will be uh, found in all MPF schemes. So uh, we hope that uh, the core fund is uh, similar to uh, the, f the fourth fund uh, where schemes have now. This will offer additional choice for scheme members. Uh, this is uh, my thinking, but we will consult the public further. Yes, uh, we have already uh, introduced automation and streaming processes uh, for MPF schemes. We do agree that one of the reasons uh, for high administrative fees of MPF scheme is there are many cumbersome administrative procedures and overlapping procedures. Now, if we can lower the administrative cost in this regard, we should be able to lower the cost of MPF schemes. So uh, this is what I intend to do, but we don't rule out the possibility that in the future, uh, other than uh, in addition to uh, fee control of the core fund, there may also be other uh, measures. But now, uh, our our plan is uh, to launch a core fund and to uh, further automation and streamlining of uh, administrative processes. We well, still have some time. 
I'm sure we'll be able to see the uh, effect of these uh, measures, whether uh, they are done by the industry on a voluntary basis. Because uh, when they have uh, cut their administrative costs, there is room for fees to be lower. I hope that uh, you, uh, the core fund uh, or the uh, index fund, will also help to uh, lower the cost. Uh, five minutes left. Uh, each member will have uh, one minute. Mr. Wong Kwok Heng, Chairman. In uh, four of part three of uh, the Secretary's uh, remarks, stored value facilities. The KCRC frequently uh, uh, makes a wrong uh, deduction, wrong um, uh, um, uh, uh, money of. Did deduct money wrongly from uh, Octopus. So uh, how can you ensure that there is a security? Yes, in the future, all these uh, store value facilities will need to be licensed by Hong Kong MA. Uh, we will have on-site uh, inspection and uh, off-site inspection, and uh, there will also be penalty terms. We will penalize the operators. Are you saying that currently they are not licensed yet? Now, for a store valued payment card, yes, uh, it is regulated by the banking ordinance. Example is the Octopus card. In future, we will also monitor online uh, payment systems. Mr. Albert Chen. Well, um, we've got a lot of uh, development in terms of uh, business uh, or financial cooperation of the mainland. There's never any assessment since uh, this has started. People have never were never asked uh, would they want 15 million uh, visitors from the mainland to be here, and uh, now suddenly when uh, SMEs have uh, closed down, Hong Kong people have awakened, and that's the same in Taiwan. Of course, there are people who have benefited. I asked for an assessment report from the secretary to uh, give us the truth. Who? Have benefited from uh, the uh, cooperation. Uh, people uh, like the chairman uh, from uh, China uh, Enterprise. Well, many shops have closed down. Many people have lost their jobs. So uh, please uh, do justice to uh, the local community and give us an assessment report. Thank you, Mr. Kenneth Leung. I've got only one minute. I'd like to ask a question on paragraph seven of the speaking of the speech. Uh, it is said that uh, there will be a public consultation on a proposal to introduce an open-ended fund company structure, OFC. Now, I have uh, gone through your consultation paper very carefully. Para 15.5 F1. In securities and futures contract rather than engaging in activities undertaken by conventional companies, such as commercial trade and business. Also, my mind, why you join the OFC? I'd like to know why you are going to uh, restrict the activity of OFCs uh, so much. Uh, are we on a par with uh, overseas experience? Now, if you can answer now, you can give me a written reply. Just a simple answer. Uh, many funds do invest in securities, so uh, this open-ended fund company structure would like to set out a framework. Uh, for uh, other uh, unit trust, uh, uh, it's just like unit trust funds, Mr. Christopher Chu. Now, uh, for um, ETF, uh, stamp duty uh, was waived. Now you are going to uh, provide a total waive of all ETFs, including the tracking trackers fund. Uh, as a result, uh, there may be speculation in. Uh, in uh, ETFs, and this may uh, lower the transaction value of uh, stocks. But uh, all these indices uh, will uh, lead to fluctuation of volatilities of our local market. Now, we still have over $30 billion of stamp duty revenue from other 
uh, transactions. Now, if uh, you are going to waive uh, the um, stamp duty for all ETFs, then uh, we will be getting less stamp duty. It's very good because uh, this $30 billion can be stand, uh, spent on charities. In future, you have to pay stamp duty if you trade in uh, stocks but not in ETFs. This is unfair to small investors. All right, the last speaker, Dr. Priscilla Lau. Global Globalization is a trend. So Taiwan uh, is doing a disservice to itself uh, if it opposes ECFA and nobody can help them. Now, uh, Taiwan is just uh, like a second tier, fourth tier city on the mainland with no economic development in the past few decades. Now, for t Hong Kong, I think uh, we should grasp this opportunity. Now, if they go on like that, Hong Kong uh, should make use of the opportunity. Well, our competitors are Singapore and India. Uh, we do have a geographical advantage. We should not talk about reliance, but we should uh, uh, grasp all the benefits and uh, over our competitors. The secretary uh, should map our plans so that we can even be more aggressive and advanced. All right, uh, we end the session here.